All right, so the first topic here is lead generation. Some people were asking like what different ways of lead generation there are. And uh, for those of you that have gotten started in the business, you know that there's tons of different ways, whether it's social media, um, door knocking, cold calling. Um, there's, it's kind of limitless how you, how you want to do it. Some people, um, all they do is make YouTube videos and they have a, just a, hundreds of videos and they get tons of people reaching out to them from all over the country with questions about buying and selling homes. And they're able to make a business off of just referrals from those videos. Um, that's just one of many ways out there uh, that you can lead generate. Um, getting started, most people use their sphere. Uh, so just talking to your, your friends and family, your, your coworkers as well, and letting them know that you've transitioned into the business. And uh, yeah, that's really the, probably the easiest way to do it because people you already know, you don't have to uh, face the rejections when you get on the phone with them. Um, any uh, you know, personalities that you might interact with. Uh, I know I've, I've faced those in, in my first few months of, of uh, cold calling people that uh, for whatever reason, they're just having a bad day and they, and they put that bad day on you and, and uh, release their anger because you're calling them just trying to really trying to help them, but they see it as you're trying to sell them something. Uh, any, anything to add? And again, just want to reiterate these uh, rules back here. So cameras on, if you're in a safe situation, ask questions. Uh, this is a live class. It's a, it's a discussion. Uh, it's not just me recording myself and then uh, you guys watching it. It's, it's in this zoom forum so that you guys can ask questions if you have them. And uh, if you have input from your personal experiences, please do feel free to share that. And then lastly, take notes. All right. Um, someone asked about Beyond Skill Bridge, like what ways to prepare for um, afterward. And, in, and then also there's another similar topic that was about like why you get licensed now while you're um, not able to make any money while you're in the program. And uh, my answer to that, I'm sure you guys have heard it before, is that it takes it takes about eight months on average for the average person to start generating income as a real estate agent. And so if you use up six or however long of that period in the program when you literally are legally not allowed to make money, then two months after you're out from the military, then you'll be generating income. Um, and that, again, that's referring to the average, the average agent. So if you can consider yourself above average, it might be three months to start generating income. You know, you might cut it in half or, or even sooner. And so if you use up that time when you're building your business, you know, making your branding, getting your business cards, setting up your website, uh, reaching out to your sphere, letting them know that you've, you're transitioning from the military into real estate. If you use up that time in SkillBridge, then as soon as you get out, you'll be generating income. And that's basically how it worked out for me. I got my license um, before starting the program. So day one of being in the internship, I was out there doing on-the-job training, showings, um, going to open houses, sitting open houses, et cetera. And then um, once I was complete with my Skipper Ridge internship and out of the military, then I was, I was already making money on, in January of uh, 2022, and I got out December 31st. All right. Um, previous program graduates lessons learned. Those of you that are senior in the program, um, that you feel like you know what the program is about and, and how to get the most from it, feel free to chime in. Anyone have anything to contribute on that? Things you know now that you wish you would have known um, when you just started the program or before starting the program? Anyone? I just have one thing to add to that. Um, I would say that the hardest thing to grasp initially was that um, as great as Quilt Group is, it makes a lot more sense to go through the, uh, the studies for the state licensing because it sets a good foundation to some of the terms or knowledge that you're new to getting into the uh, real estate and then going and transitioning to, um, you know, start incorporating group training 
uh, was a lot easier to understand. I started with the uh, buyer agent bootcamp. And once I got to like a certain point, it started making a lot more sense because they would throw terms out and then be like very confusing. Like, what is that? Like, I don't understand what that is. I don't know what they mean by this. Um, but going through the, uh, the pre-licensure studies um, just made it a lot more uh, understandable. Yeah, 100%. Um, yeah, when I was first starting out, I was hearing all these acronyms, kind of like when you first joined the military and people are throwing around all these acronyms, you have no idea what they're talking about. Um, it definitely helps to go through pre-licensing, get your license first, and then dive into that. But it, my so when I when I would talk to some of the people, when I was still in the in the program, I I would made myself available to other interns, and I was like, hey, if you if you want to talk about like what I'm doing, to so you can get started, um, feel free to reach out. And when I talk to them, I'd say just focus 100 percent of your time on getting your license. Um, but looking back, I wish I would have because that worked for me, and I'm I'm still kind of glad I did it that way. But I was in a different situation. I was 100% committed to making it happen as a realtor instead of, you know, oh, I'm going to be doing school after I get out or I'm going to have a full-time job and I'm going to do real estate on the side. Like I was burn the ships, ready to go, going to make this real estate profession work. And so that's why I had, I wanted to get my license ASAP. But looking back, I wish I would have incorporated some more uh, Google Group University in there as well as the like NAEA training and then the EXP world training. Um, because a lot of times you'll, if you don't uh, seek out that training and seek out that continual development, um, you'll be hitting walls. And then eventually somebody will mention something to you like that's from those trainings. And then you're like, oh, I wish I would have known that months ago and I wouldn't be making the same mistake that I'm making right now. Um, but yeah, definitely uh, getting your, licensed ASAP and getting those fundamentals uh, locked down will help you understand all the different lingo. Anyone else want to contribute? All right, on to the next topic. Um, educating buyers on fees and total cost for a home. Um, so my short answer to this is to let the lender that you're working with do the majority of the education on the fees because uh, there's there's like 50 different fees that go into um, the like closing table and there's a like fee for record recordation for it to be recorded in public record there's a like fee for the title change fee for all these different um, things that the title company and that the lender are very familiar with um, and you don't necessarily need to cover them up front because they end up bundling them up into one package at the end anyways. Um, but as far as the fees that you need to be worried about, and this could vary from state to state, um, the big ones would be the fee for the home inspection, because if you're dealing with a, um, a VA buyer, they're going to have to do the home inspection as well as the termite inspection. Um, so you want to put tell them up front that they may need to have you know five to 600, depending on, on what the price is for your area here. Home inspections cost around five to 600 bucks. And okay. then, <laughs> and then uh, uh, the termite uh, inspection uh, is typically uh, covered. All right, I think it was Pedro. All right, so um, lost my train of thought, but yeah, educating buyers on the fees. So termite inspection and the home inspection, those are the big ones that you wanna uh, let them know. Uh, and so the termite, again, here, it, it'll vary by what area you're in. You might might not even be required depending on, on the state you're in, um, but that'll be another, uh, about six hundred dollar fee, and uh, those are the big ones. Let them know up front that they they'll need to have cash available for that, and then earnest money deposit. I don't necessarily call that a fee because it's still like their money, and they can get it back if they decide to cancel the transaction 
or they get it back at the end of the transaction to put towards their closing costs. But you'd also want to make that known to them up front so that they're not just throwing their cash out the window, buying a brand new car, um, anything like that. Um, educating buyers. Yes, that's that's huge, especially um, when you're starting out, you're going to be like the, the chain of command of of uh, real estate that's our standard flow. Some people can have the ability to jump right into being listing agents and, and that's awesome if you can do that. Um, but most people start off showing agent, like literally you're, you work under a senior agent who's like, hey, here's my clients, go show them these houses, go and lock the door for them and give them the details about the property. Um, and then it escalates up to when you have your own clients that you're working with and um, maybe have you have a, a showing agent that's working with you. But uh, the education process for those buyers, you're going to be working with buyers when you're starting out and you want to really uh, take an owner ownership of educating them on the process. My agent that I had when I bought my, my condo, my first purchase, um, did not do a very good job. But I didn't really notice that like I, I was too busy with work to really care about getting educated on house buying. I just wanted to buy a house. But uh, one way to, if you have a client that's like that, that doesn't necessarily have the time to be sitting down and talk to, talking to you about the process, there's other ways to educate them, like providing them with um, recordings. Like, from, let's see who's hot mic again. Um, yeah, so you can record um, on bomb bomb or loom or, or just on, on your iPhone, just send them a video explaining, um, whatever aspect it is that you want to educate them on. And, uh, it definitely helps to, um, I'm still in the process of doing it, of recording videos, because a lot of times it's going to be the same stuff you're talking to them about over and over again. And so if you, um, record a video, uh, explaining the, the, uh, purchase agreement, that's a that's probably like an hour long conversation right there. And if you just record a video of yourself going over it in detail, you can then provide that to your buyers, and then they can watch it at their own pace. They can rewatch it. They can watch it and fast forward, etc. Um, but it'll help you to show that you care about their education uh, with the home buying process. And more more than likely, they'll use you again in the future. Whereas if you if you're just like, hey, sign in here, here's your house, here's your keys chances are they're not going to really have that relationship with you. They're not going to um, feel that they really benefited from that, from your, the services that you provide as an expert realtor. So it's definitely important to educate your buyers. Um, all right. Next topic that someone asked for was the mentorship program. Uh, so the EXP mentorship program, the way that works is once you are licensed and um, officially with EXP, the EXP mentorship program, there's like a, like if you think of in the military, there's the admin office at EXP, there is the mentorship program office. And so uh, there are people that, that are um, their responsibilities to assign mentors to everyone. And so once you're registered with EXP, as long as you're not with a team, because if you register with a team, then your team will be the ones mentoring you. But if you're just a solo agent, then EXP will, will reach out to you and assign you a mentor. And uh, that mentor, the requirements to become a mentor, um, you have to have closed at least 10 transactions. And there's also this training syllabus that you have to go through. And so um, that's the that's how you know that it's not just some random person, um, some brand new um, you know, licensee that's going to be assigned to you as a mentor. It's someone that, had, that does have some experience. And I would say most of the time, they're, they're actually pretty solid. Like a lot of times it's these top producers that just love educating um, agents and love, they love the profession. So they love to share it with others. And so they, they take on that mentorship responsibility. Um, so it's definitely a good program. Um, any questions on the mentorship program? All right. And then next topic, uh, more information about numbers and how to find clients. Um, something I just thought of for that was, uh, um, so I, I signed up for Red X about a month ago. And um, I think I shared last week how I went from just dialing on my phone and I purchased some some leads through this um, service called Pioneer. Uh, it's like a credit uh, bureau or something like that where 
they have information on people's addresses and how they're if they're different from their the property they own. So like the mailing address is different from the address that's near you that you're looking at, um, like targeting to sell or whatever. Um, then uh, yeah, so they probably provide you with that information, and then you call them, ask them if they're interested in selling or or um, know of anyone in the area that's interested in selling. But uh, I would from manually dialing those numbers one by one and it taking forever to, to do that and then getting wrong numbers, et cetera, to using Red X. And uh, went from calling, you know, 20 people in two hours to um, about a hundred people in, in about an hour and a half. Um, a lot of times people don't answer their phone, but um, the big thing that you need to remember and that you'll hear over and over again, when you go to like EXP trainings and stuff, and listening in on videos about cold calling is that it, it takes repetition, like takes um, dialing that same number over and over again to finally get an answer. Cause just think about it. If like people that are calling you, like I get this, this spam call from this cyber backer um, quick sidetrack. As soon as you get licensed, all these companies will be reaching out to you about marketing and stuff. And some of them might be good, but most of them are just um, spam, just trying to get you to spend money on shiny objects. But that number has called me probably 30 times now. I haven't, I need to do the little stop calling me thing, but um, a couple of times I actually have answered just to hear, hear the, hear the person, hear their techniques on, on cold calling. Um, but had they not called multiple times, I would never have picked up the phone. And so it's kind of the same thing when you're, when you're calling people, if you don't call, you know, 10, 15 times, chances are you're not going to get an answer. And that one time you call and they don't answer, it's not them ignoring you. They might be driving or just they don't have the, their phone on them to answer. So that's my little spiel on that. But yes, uh, Red X is a, yes, a solid tool to use. It costs, uh, um, I think you can do monthly for like a hundred bucks. And then you, the dialer is another hundred bucks on top of that. So about $200 a month for that. Uh, and then, or you can do like the annual, which altogether will be like 2,500 bucks. Uh, any questions on any of that stuff I've said so far? All righty. Uh, how to find mentors, steps for take, to take for this internship. Um, so I talk, kind of talked about that last week, how to find mentors. Like once you're um, in EXP, they'll be assigned to you or you'll have access to workplace. Workplace is like Facebook for your company and you can go on there and find a uh, mentor that looks like they'll jive with you and they're top producing person like they, they, they you want to emulate in your business. So you can go in there and kind of hand select your mentor. All right. On to the next one. Uh, explanation about broker fees, office fees, desk fees, tech fees, form fees, commissions, or anything about the fees that a new real estate agent will have to know before they decide to go with a broker. So, um, a quick side topic with that. So people are, people, especially uh, if you're unfamiliar with, and I was unfamiliar at one point with like, oh, what's the broker? What's a brokerage? I, like when someone says like, I'm, I'm interviewing different brokers. Um, do, do you actually know what you're talking about when you say that? Because a broker is, so, is a, it's like saying I'm an agent. So you're interviewing with different agents. It's not, it's not necessarily like a company. Um, a broker is like you, get your agent license, then get your broker license. So you might say there's, there are plenty of brokers within EXP that are not the actual, they don't hold the, the position of being a broker. Um, they, they're just licensed as a broker. Um, but within EXP, there's, it's usually held at the state level. So for example, for Hawaii, we have uh, four brokers that review all the contracts and hold the responsibility of being the broker. Um, and other Brokerages. So when I say brokerage, I mean EXP, Tyler Williams, um, Cola Banker, et cetera. And there also might be independent brokerages, like just, just mom and pop brokerage that operates in your hometown. Um, but yeah, so that's that's a distinction between what it means for a broker. But so the fees that go along with it, so the fees for EXP, it's a $150 initial join fee that covers thousand business cards and your in about 20 and 20 folders to put like all your documents when you go to listing presentations, et cetera. Uh, let's see. 
is shown. All right. Um, and so that's, that's the initial join fee. And then every month after that, it's $85. A lot of other brokerages are at least double that, uh, if not more. So just keep that in mind, especially for people that are, that are worried about money when you just get out of the military and you're, you know, not necessarily generating if you're not going after it uh, full time. It, it's, it's significantly less expensive than it would be with any other brokerage. Um, and then as far as the other fees, like there's, that's, that's it. Like if you want to go rent an office space, that's up to you, but you don't have to. My wife and I, we work from home and we make it work. Sometimes I got to go to the cafe to, to just focus and buckle down and knock out some documents. But for the most part, we don't need to spend two or $300 a month renting an office space because I can do all my stuff from here. And a lot of times you're on the road doing showings, especially when you're starting out working with buyers. And then other fees, yeah, all that other stuff is just, it's, um, and if you want to add on those things, like all the, the Red X that I pay for or any other services, you can add those on out of your own pocket. Um, but it, you're, what you're provided for the for $85 a month is um, KB Core, as well as like all the marketing center and EXP Enterprise, uh, EXP World, all that stuff, access to your upline. I would say that's probably the biggest uh, value added is the upline that you have. Um, I don't know if you guys have been going to those uh, Monday morning mastermind meetings, but those are uh, worth their weight in gold. Um, there's people that, that pay for that kind of training, but you can have it free. All uh, right. Anything to add from anyone on that? All right. Um, housing market, nationwide inflation. That's just a matter of being a professional and keeping your eyes on what's going on in the market um, and being able to educate your buyer on that. A lot of time, right now, they're, the news is pumping out fear about how I saw some headline, the um, housing housing market plummets as uh, interest rates continue to climb. And you're like, if you really look at the numbers, it's really not a plummet the way the news describes it. Um, and so it's just a matter of explaining to uh, your buyers that it's still a good time to buy. And especially when you're working. So a lot of times the um, description that I use here in Hawaii is when you're renting or living on base, that eight, that tax free BH that you're putting towards that rent is, you know, that's a hundred percent loss. Base housing isn't going to give you a refund. Your renter, your, your landlord isn't going to give you a refund, et cetera. So that's a hundred percent loss. So a lot of times people think, all right, as long as I don't buy anything, if I just rent, I'm here in reality, your money is down here because you're throwing away $3,000 a month renting or, or, or uh, living on base. Um, and then if you consider the, the, that money going into a, a property that you purchase on top of the equity that your property is gaining over time, then you're, you're actually going from here to down here. So it's, it's a big difference between um, owning a property and renting. Um, but yeah, speaking to the, the inflation in the market, um, and educating them on how, yes, the market fluctuates with, with interest rates, et cetera. Um, but over time it's, it's better to buy a house instead of throwing away your money every month on rent listing presentation and value proposition step-by-step. Step. We'll dive in and do a, um, a full session on that later on, a fully remote agent. Again, like I talked about at the beginning of the class. Some people, all they do is make YouTube videos and they make a living off of referrals. Uh, the way referrals work, uh, the long story short is how is you sign a contract with an agent in the area that they're going to buy. And uh, you, you basically say, hey, um, agent, here's my friend. Here's his phone number. Uh, they want to buy in this area. Here's a contract. You're going to give me 25% of the commission when you find them a home. Have a great day. You stay, you stay in touch with them. You, you give them information that, that's needed to help with the buying process, but it's maybe 10 minutes of work. And so you do that four times, get get a four 25% commissions, and there's a full commission right there uh, for altogether maybe an hour's worth of work. Um, so that's one way to be a fully remote agent. 
anything to add from from anybody on that because a lot, a lot of people a lot of interns like oh, i'm going to hold off on getting my license because i'm staying where i was stationed and i'll be moving across the country to a completely different area so i don't want to get my license there yet because um i'm not gonna i'm not there so i won't be able to show any homes but you could 100 be creative and make videos about if, if you're at all familiar with the area or even if you're not you could um, make videos about how you're moving to that area and, and research you're doing on that area from afar and start to establish, establish yourself as an expert on the area and start to get referrals. Where do you recommend we stay while during this program? Um, ideally, you want to go to the place where you're going to be selling, but um, if, you're, if you're where you are, then refer back to what I just said about being a fully remote agent. How to create a successful schedule for pre-licensed courses and sticking to it. We've done some trainings on um, time management. The big thing I would say is tying this in with goal setting, lay out where you want to be. If you if you want to look out as far as 20 years, do that. Uh, if you just want to uh, make it a shorter process, look out six months from now or the end of your skill bridge program, where do you want to be? Do you want to be uh, generating uh, income from the close transactions. Okay, you want to have uh, two closings on um, the last day or, or whatever, the day after you get out of the military. All right, how do you get those two close transactions? All right, I need to have at least 10 buyers that I'm working with. Okay, how do I get 10 buyers? All right, I need to have at least 100 contacts, contacts meaning conversation with somebody on the phone or in person. Okay, how do I have those conversations? All right, I need to call 2000 people to get those 100 conversations. Okay. How do I make those 2000 phone calls? All right. I have three months left in the program, 2000 divided by 90 days. All right. I need to make this number of phone calls every day. All right. How do I make those phone calls every day? All right. I, I average uh, about 10 phone calls every 30 minutes. So I need to block off this chunk of time here, here, and here. And a break in between because I'm losing my mind if I just do nonstop calling for five hours, um, and then you just make it happen. That's that's really how it. Uh, what it boils down to is just tying in that goal setting, and then working backwards, doing that backwards planning to what am I going to do today to make progress towards my goals. And same thing for studying for your pre-licensing and etc. Um, all right, I want to pass my test on this date. I need to do at least this number of practice tests and I need to go through all these books, whatever um, backwards plan to what are you, what are you doing today? Seller transaction, focus on preliminary paperwork. Uh, we'll go over that in, in a deep dive topic later on and then share works. All right. So that's all I've got for today. We're at that 30 minute mark. Again, this is meant to be uh, an interactive once a week meeting instead of, uh, you know, once a month where, um, you kind of feel people feel like they're detached because they're not talking to someone on a weekly basis, given that this internship is uh, fully online, um, at least for while you're working on your license. Once you're licensed, we'd fully expect you to be out there um, talking to people, finding buyers and sellers, setting yourself up for success for when you get out of the military. All right. Any questions? I'll stay on a little longer, but if, if you uh, don't have any questions, you're welcome to leave. Have a wonderful day. Go out there, be successful. Pass your licensing exam. Let me know if you need help with the um, with any study tips or completing the application, join the XP, et cetera. I'm always available, just reach out. And I see some messages in the chat box. I'll look at those in a second. Here. Sweet, thank you, Zor. Absolutely, have a good one. Um, Patton, do you have any questions? Hey, can you hear me? Uh, yeah, Victor? Yeah, just a quick question on the hours requirement for GGU. Um, is there like a minimum requirement that I should be doing on GGU or since I'm on license, can I just put all my time towards, towards that? Uh, I believe it's uh, like two hours a day on GGU. Uh, if you're... Um, working on your license and then once you're licensed 
four hours. Um, but yeah, All right. I, it might sound like a lot, but it's, it's definitely doable. And my little spiel that I give to people when people, sometimes people ask, I know this isn't what you're asking, but some people ask like, what's the minimum meaning like, all right, I'm going to do four hours of internship a day, and then I'm going to go to the beach the rest of the day. And uh, some people ask that. And I know that's not you, but um, I tell them, like, when I was in the internship, again, I had that burn the ships mindset. I'm going to make this real estate profession work. And so I was doing 12 to, to 16 hours a day um, of working to build my business, you know, talking to people, talking to my sphere, letting them know that I'm transitioning. And, uh, and so if you apply that mindset, you can easily knock out the, the two or four hours, whatever it is for you. And you can also get your license in a very much faster than, than the average person takes. Got it. Thanks, Victor.